Hi, and welcome to Coffee with Connie. Today we're here with uh, Principal Planner Diane Mazarakis and uh, the Executive Director of Vision Long Island, Eric Alexander. And we're here to talk about smart growth. Uh, either Der uh, Eric or uh, Diane, what is smart growth? What makes um, certain developments smart and other development uh, not so smart? Um, maybe I'll take a stab at it first. Sure. I, I, I think what uh, is important um, in looking at smart growth, um, it, it's really boiling it down to creating a sense of place, um, the physical character of the community, looking at the built environment uh, to determine um, is, is it walkable? Is there a mix of uses? Uh, are, there, are there housing choices that are uh, available for young people and for older folks? Uh, are there safe streets? Uh, is there a vi viable economic system in the community, particularly a downtown, that functions? Can folks live, work, uh, and shop and recreate in the same community? Uh, so it really, the term smart growth embodies the uh, basic principles of planning that we've had for hundreds of years before a kind of more or less a, a suburban um, uh, a sprawl pattern of development that occurred in the last 50 or 60 years. So we're going back to that village style planning. Mm -hmm. um, um, and so smart growth embodies a set of principles that bring us back to historical mm -hmm. patterns of growth. Mm -hmm. Such as, give, can you give some examples of smart growth? Um, I think smart growth is nothing more than good planning. That recognize that affordable housing isn't affordable if you don't have uh, transportation options that don't exceed your housing expenses mm -hmm. and that uh, suburban subdivisions don't meet our American dream if the kids aren't getting or being able to walk to school go to social activities because their parents are working late two three jobs to play for taxes they had to pay for infrastructure and um, that their family time is spent commuting you know we're not living the American dream if mm -hmm. we're sprawling our development out but it wasn't I don't think that that uh, I think that there was a decision made in the 50s to uh, go more auto-centric and create our town fathers decided to have all our major corridors strip commercial zoning and more towards um, external factors moving us towards uh, downtowns and revitalizing mm -hmm. downtowns. And that contrast with what Eric was talking about as a traditional downtowns so when, when we take a look at Port Jefferson or Sayville or Patch Org, um, they were built not for the automobile, but for more mass transportation. Um, and Diane, you mentioned some of the cost, which is just time uh, consumption. Uh, what are the other costs of, of sport? Uh, I mean, I think that there's, there's certainly, it impacts your family uh, from a social perspective if you're in your car quite so much. Uh, also, there's an economic cost um, when you have large lot single family mm -hmm. homes. Folks are paying for much more housing than they really need. Uh, and, and when you look at 2,500 square foot homes, 3,500 square foot homes is really the only housing options that, that exist in Brookhaven. Um, that's the new housing production. Uh, we don't have 600 square foot uh, either apartments or condos, 700, 800, 1,500 square foot uh, units, which would work for younger people, for older folks. So we don't have those housing options. Uh, so there's cost to that when you pay more than you need to mm -hmm. for housing. Mm -hmm. um, the other costs are um, in really gasoline right now. Gas prices mm -hmm. have doubled in yes. the last two years. Uh, and we're, we're seeing um, an, an uptick in, uh, we've seen over the last few years, also an uptick in vehicle miles travel where people are just spending more and more mm -hmm. time and money commuting to their homes and to their right. jobs. And, and that has an environmental That's price tag environment as well as, as a uh, economic price tag. And, so, and three, three other quick things I think the, 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 the costs would be from a, also an environmental perspective. When we gobble up open space for subdivisions, large lot, mm -hmm. single family homes that, mm -hmm. that eat up a lot of the remaining, uh, whether it be pieces of the compatible growth area in the Pine Barrens or whether it be mm -hmm. other uh, natural settings or even things, you know, agriculture uh, mm -hmm. and other things that, that folks moved out here to, to have right. a rural environment and we, we're, we're, we're building a lot of subdivisions. So there's that piece. So just just hold it there, sure. and, and I think that that may be confu confusing to some people because we're talking about development, and yet you're talking about preservation. Yep. So how how do those two things go hand in hand? Cost 
though I want to speak to a little bit more, because it's not just the tangible out-of-pocket costs to the residents through higher taxes for infrastructure and public water, roads, and sewers, and schools. That's your out-of-pocket. But there's those intangible costs to air quality. Mm -hmm. Long Island's a non-attainment area for air quality. That's right. shocking. For ozone. Yes. Absolutely right. unbelievable that our island yes. community is non-attainment well, for air and, quality. And that is because of the overuse of the automobile. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the cost, when you have sprawling development and you don't live, work, and play in an right. area, you can't walk up to the store to get milk and you're getting into your car, the impacts to air quality and water quality um, are intangible, yet they're coming to the forefront of our lives and in our generation. Mm -hmm. And then the, the greenhouse gas emissions, of course. Right. Um, the global warming. Global warming right. effect. And uh -huh. sea level rise, and it becomes very, right. it, it, it's no longer intangible because right. we are so cognizant yes, yes. of the flooding. I mean, that, that is a critical, and, and Eric was talking about uh, open space, which is, uh, is always a, an enormous issue here. Uh, in the town of Brookhaven. Many, many people, of course, support uh, the preservation of open space as well as they should. But we have this other critical environmental crisis, which is global warming. Now, right now we're talking about, obviously, uh, the opposite of smart growth, which is um, sprawl development. And, and sprawl development is, is the spreading out of development over large areas of land mass. They're all spread out, and the um, and what makes up development, we have commercial in, in one area, or, or stores in, in one area, we have houses in another area, we have workplaces in another area, and so um, you need a car to do just about everything. That's the sprawl model. We're talking about um, condensing that or compacting that into uh, centers such as the historical centers or historical towns on the island. Uh, and and that is the idea of smart growth. And that preserves open space. Yep. And it reduces the uh, pollution and global warming uh, that uh, Diane was carbon talking footprint. about. Or the carbon yeah. footprint. Yeah. Right. That's where the land use comes into yes. play. And that's why uh -huh. the town is so important uh -huh. in changing their codes. It's important to do a master plan, which is what you're doing for, for, uh, mm -hmm. based on a community vision mm -hmm. for, for Brookhaven 2030. But uh, in order to transform your land use so that you concentrate activities, you, you get the economics right because you're mm -hmm. transferring from an auto-oriented economy into a multi multimodal essentially mm -hmm. between the possibility for, for bus, the possibility down the road, and I agree, for, for, for light rail, some form of transit. But really, but really walking and biking. And folks that they may have shorter trips, yes. uh, they're not driving as far, they're not using as much gas. Uh, and so you're, you're kind of creating an economy of scale around the mix of uses that, that has economic benefits and transportation benefits, clean air benefits, but also social benefits. I mean, I, I, I confess I'm not a Brookhaven resident. I live in downtown Northport. Um, I live over a store. I walk down to my office, down to my office. And a, I, a, a I, traditional downtown? The traditional downtown. And, and I, everybody, I think, uh, most people, of course, in Brookhaven are familiar with Northport. A great town. Right, right. right. It's a my great sister town. lives in Northport, yeah. so I'm very familiar. No, it's fantastic, and, I, and I, I, I see people on the street. I talk to them, and you know, it's I'm not always the most friendly guy, but I, I actually get to connect with folks and <laughs> people. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I think it, it softens it softens things up. It really uh -huh. brings a nice spirit. Um, sure. So there's social benefits. It's that interaction. That interaction, exactly. Uh -huh. Right. Um, so. And I, I think that's one of the things that we were seeing actually when I, I was a civic leader that we wanted to build that sense of community. Right. Uh, uh, that sense of identity, uh, much easier to do if you have this compact development and you have these uh, opportunities to, to interact, either on the sidewalk and the restaurants or uh, businesses. Yeah, you know, you know, and, and certainly something you love in Brookhaven, you know, pocket mm -hmm. parks and so oh, on. Yes. Uh, yep. and, you, know, you can have social and recreational activities, mm -hmm. uh, arts, culture. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So you know, this isn't just about building and your land use, right. it's really about the, the, the things that bring people together mm -hmm. uh, as a community. Sure. Things people strive for. Right, right. Lives.